How did this Bell 206 helicopter end up in a catastrophic crash its own rotor blades, slicing through the tail section, before the main fuselage broke apart mid-air? In this video, we break down the complete timeline of the incident step by step along with multiple theories that experts believe could explain what happened. But one theory stands out above the rest. It's called mast bumping a deadly phenomenon where the rotor hub strikes the mast often triggered by sudden control inputs or flying in low G conditions. It's rare, but when it happens, it's almost always fatal. We also have the actual recorded conversation between the helicopter and air traffic control just moments before the crash. LaGuardia Tower, New York 39's back with you for Bravo Tour. Well, play the full audio right up to the crash and explore every crucial second that led to this tragic event. This is the complete story of how the Bell 206 came apart in the skies. It was the evening of April 10, 2025, time, 2.59 p.m. A Bell 206 L4 Long Ranger 4 helicopter, tail number N216MEH, operated by New York Helicopter Charter, lifts off from the downtown Manhattan heliport for a routine sightseeing tour. It's the sixth flight of the day, carrying five passengers on board. Among them, Spanish shipping executive Agustin Escobar, his wife Merce Campi Montal, and their three children, aged four, five, and 11. At the controls is a 36-year-old pilot, experienced and familiar with the route. By 3.08 p.m., the helicopter heads south, circles the Statue of Liberty, and then turns north, following the Hudson River, gradually climbing to about 1,000 feet. It soars past the George Washington Bridge, offering stunning skyline views, before the pilot makes a gentle reversal, turning back south along the New Jersey shoreline 467. 3.15 p.m. Eastern Time, April 10th, 2025. Witnesses report hearing loud cracks, like gunshots or even a sonic boom. Moments later, the helicopter begins to break apart mid-air. In shocking video footage, the tail rotor and main rotor blade are seen detaching, followed by the fuselage plunging nose first into the Hudson River, upside down, near the pier at Hoboken Park, hitting the water at a 45 degree angle. By 3.17 p.m., the helicopter has completely crashed into the river, fully submerged in the chilly 50 degree waters. But what exactly happened in the air? Let's break it down technically. The 2025 Hudson River helicopter crash appears to be the result of an in-flight structural failure, with critical damage to the rotor and tail section. Eyewitnesses, along with aviation analysts, confirm that the main rotor separated in mid-air, slicing through the tail boom, causing the helicopter to spin uncontrollably before slamming into the river. The devastation seen in the wreckage, missing rotor blades and a shattered tail section, points to one possible cause. Mass bumping, a dangerous aerodynamic event where the rotor hub strikes the mast, often triggered by sudden control inputs or low G maneuvers. When mass bumping occurs, it can cause the rotor system to destabilize, sometimes violently enough to tear the rotor apart, leading to total loss of control. This phenomenon is especially known to affect two-bladed teetering rotor systems, like those found on Bell helicopters, including the Bell 206 model involved in this crash. The Bell 206 is a widely used light helicopter family, with single and twin engine versions, manufactured by Bell helicopters since the 1960s. Its variants were popular during the Vietnam War, and later adopted by both military and law enforcement agencies. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, and other safety databases, the Bell 206 is generally considered a safe aircraft, with an accident rate of about 3, 5 to 4 0.0 per 100,000 flight hours, typical for light helicopters of its class. And now, we have the actual audio from the flight controller. This is how it unfolded. Pilot, New York 39. 39, we're at the back of the statue, looking for Bravo, currently near Qua Street. ATC, radar contact 700. You've got traffic about a quarter mile east, heading westbound, indicating 600 feet. You're cleared to 1,500, altimeter 30.33. Pilot, Climbing to 1,500. This is New York 38. ATC. Just confirming is this 38 or 39. Pilot. Correction. 39. It's 39. ATC. Copy that. 39. Maintain current heading. Pilot. Roger. 2605. Thank you. Pilot. LaGuardia, New York 39. Back with you for the Bravo Tour. 302 Bravo Tour. ATC. Approved. New York 39. Traffic. 2 o'clock. About 2 miles southeast. Helicopter at 1300. He has you in sight. Pilot. Looking for that traffic. And can I also get that checkout? ATC. 39. Cleared to lead. Traffic helicopter has visual. You're good to go. This is the moment when the helicopter begins its scenic Hudson River route, flying toward the George Washington Bridge. Then it makes a turn, descending gradually to around 900 feet. But soon after this, it disappears. ATC. Metro 21 leaving the Bravo sector squawk-free, approved. 
Do you see anything unusual in the Hudson? Anything out of the ordinary? Pilot. Metro 21. Negative. Nothing seen. Roger. Another F-35 fighter jet has just crashed. For the third time in less than a year, a cutting-edge $82 million stealth fighter destroyed. The pilot ejected safely, but the jet's wreckage was left burning on Nielsen Air Force Base in Alaska. But here's the thing. This isn't just a coincidence. In May 2024, an F-35 crashed in New Mexico after refueling. In September 2023, a Marine Corps F-35B went down in South Carolina, flying on its own for 11 minutes before crashing into a field. And now, January 2025, another one has crashed. So, the question is, why? Is the F-35 dangerously flawed? Is it struggling with extreme weather? Or is this cutting-edge technology too advanced for even the best pilots? Let's break it all down. The crash theories. On January 28, 2025, at 12.49pm, 12 an F-35A Lightning II crashed during a routine training exercise at Eielson Air Force Base, Alaska. The pilot reported an in-flight malfunction before ejecting. The jet was completely destroyed inside the base perimeter. This marks the third F-35 crash in just 12 months. So, what's going on? Theory? Number 1. Cold weather is killing the F-35. Alaska's freezing temperatures may be the hidden culprit. Back in 2018, F-35s had major issues in cold weather. Extreme cold penetrated the aircraft systems, triggering false alarms and forcing pilots into emergency landings. Lockheed Martin claimed they fixed the issue. But here's the problem. Temperatures at Eielson dropped below 30 degrees Rigiev this week. So. Did the cold once again disrupt the jet sensors? Theory number two. The F-35 is too software dependent. Unlike older jets, the F-35 is a flying supercomputer. No analog dials, only digital screens and AI-driven systems. If the software fails, the pilot is left blind. In the South Carolina crash, 2023, the pilot's helmet malfunctioned mid-flight, leaving him disoriented. He ejected only for investigators to later find out that the jet was actually flyable. Theory number three, the F-35 is overwhelming. Even elite pilots, the F-35 isn't just another fighter jet. It's a complex machine that demands extreme focus. Even experienced pilots have struggled with its systems. So, was this latest crash caused by a sensor glitch? A mechanical failure? Or did the aircraft overwhelm the pilot? Until the very, uh, there was no other choice but to eject. Until the investigation concludes, we're left with more questions than answers. The F-35. A tech marvel or a nightmare? The F-35s. Three variants. Why do they matter? The F-35 comes in three different versions, each designed for specific missions. F-35A. Air Force. Standard takeoff. Internal 25 mm cannon for dogfights. F-35B. Marines. Short takeoff vertical landing for amphibious ships. F-35C, Navy. Larger wings, foldable for carrier storage, longer range. Each model is packed with stealth technology, supersonic speed, and AI-driven systems. But with these cutting-edge advancements come cutting-edge risks. The F-35's $4 million helmet. A game-changer or a liability? The F-35's helmet is unlike anything ever built. It's custom-fitted to each pilot's head. Displays 360-degree vision using six external cameras. Shows flight data, target info, and even missile recommendations. The pilot can see through the jet's body to the ground below. Sounds incredible, right? Except if this system fails mid-flight, it leaves the pilot completely disoriented. And that's exactly what happened in the South Carolina crash. The F-35 engine, powerful but problematic. The Pratt Whitney F-135 engine powers the F-35, produces 43,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner, capable of Mach 1.6 speeds, uses advanced radar-absorbing materials for stealth, but there's a catch. The engine is extremely complex and requires constant maintenance. Some experts say it's been pushed to its limits, which could be contributing to the F-35's recurring failures. The future of the F-35. The F-35 is one of the most advanced fighter jets in history. It can evade radar. It has unmatched dogfighting capabilities. It's equipped with next-generation technology, but three crashes in a year raise serious concerns. Is the F-35 too advanced for its own good? Are extreme conditions revealing flaws in its design? Or is this simply the cost of pushing technology to the limit. One thing is certain, the Pentagon is watching closely. And after this latest crash, the future of the F-35 program is now under serious scrutiny. If you found this breakdown insightful, subscribe and hit the bell icon. We bring you the most in-depth engineering and aviation content on YouTube.